everyone, and welcome to Grace Online, and happy Mother's Day, and I'd like to give a special shout out to my mom. Now, we're so glad that you can join us today. Get ready as we're about to enter into worship and hear a message from our head pastor, Pastor Richard Plunk. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day to Mom. Happy Mother's Day. We love you, Mom. Hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. You're the best mom ever. We love, we love you. you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. Mommy. Hey, Brittany. The kids and I just wanted to say we love you. Thank you so much for all that you do for us, and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. We love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for everything that you do. Say bye, Mommy. Bye. Hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love you so much. You are the best mom ever, and I hope you have a great day. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. day. We love you, and we hope that you have a wonderful day during this incredibly terrible time. Love you! Say hi, Mama. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Hi, my name is Kimberly, and this special day, I want to wish to all the mothers in the world, Happy Mother's Day, and God bless you. Happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day! day. Good morning, Grace Community. How are you today? Happy Mother's Day to all of our ladies. Happy anniversary to my beautiful wife, Kara, tomorrow. And hope you all are having a wonderful day. Happy Mother's Day to my partner in worship leading, Bree. It was great seeing all of you yesterday. Hope you enjoyed your roses and your pictures. And it will be something that you can take as a keepsake. You know, this is a time that you will certainly never forget this Mother's Day this year. But in the middle of it, we are going to do what we are created to do, and that is worship the Lord. So I invite you to join with us, and let's raise a hallelujah up to the Lord today. Because even as Job said, the Lord gives, he takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah
and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you, and a thousand generations. All your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. What a great time of worship. We've looked at the Lord. Now let's approach his throne and bring our petitions to him this morning. Father, we come in the name of Jesus Christ. And we, Lord, we, we pray for our country today. In such a critical time as we're in, we pray that you would anoint every health care worker and first responder and, and those that are caring for those that are sick. I pray for those that are sick, Lord. It should bring healing to their bodies. Anoint them now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for our president, our governor, their staff, their families. I pray for our congressmen, our senators. I pray for, for our mayors, Lord, and our county judge, Andy Eads. I pray for these. I pray the anointing of God upon them. Give them wisdom, O oh God. I pray for Dr. Claunt and Kermit Bell and Greg Headley, Lord, our district leadership. Bless them, our presbyter, Father. 
I pray against this worldwide epidemic that you'd stop it, Father, and I pray healing would come to our world. Father, help us now as we reopen and may we make good decisions and move to a place of back to normalcy, even though it's a new normal, Lord. I pray, oh God, for our, our missionaries, Lord, that you'd touch Erin Dutton today. She's in Senegal, Africa. Bless her, oh Lord. I pray for, for these others, Lord, that are our local missionaries, that you'd bless them and anoint them. I pray for them and minister to them. Lord, I pray for, for our, uh, our military people, that you'd keep your hand upon them. All of those that are involved in the medical area, Lord, and those that are treating people, Lord, from, from doctors and nurses and health care givers, Lord, I pray your blessings. Lord, I pray for all these that have been sick and have in the hospital. I pray the blessings of God, the anointing of God on them. I pray for Tiffany Went, Lord, and for Tom Head as he recovers. Lord, I pray for Shirley Miller and Lonnie Sewell and Jeff Alexander and Isabella and Barry Johnson. Father, you know the folks that are close to our hearts right here at Grace, and I pray healing on their bodies. Anoint them in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I pray for Mom today that you'd bless her and let healing flow through her body. I pray that you'd touch her. I pray for Kara's aunt, Carolyn, Lord, that you'd bless her and bring healing to her body in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we turn to you because you're the author and the finisher of our faith. And as we celebrated last week with communion by the stripes of Jesus Christ, are we healed. So, Lord, I pray for healing, healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray the blessings of God upon the house of grace and all of our folks, wherever they are today, Lord, may your presence be with them. Father, we just turn our faces to you. Bless our people, O oh God. Keep us safe, healthy. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen. Thank you for joining with us for this worship online today. and we, we appreciate you being with us, and I thank you for all your prayers for my mother. Some of you know she was taken to the hospital out in Richardson, and she's in real critical condition, but thank you for praying for Mom Mary and, and blessing her and, and, and doing that for us. We want to turn to our attention now to our mother's we thank God for all of our mothers and our ladies especially because we know that there are some that, that are not moms, but they're just as special nonetheless. So we salute all of our ladies today and we ask God's blessing on all of you. And we have a special song arranged for you this morning by one of our young ladies in honor of her mother, but also all of our ladies. So would you welcome this morning, Grace Vareed. Give me on, on, on and on, just lead me on. When I wake up, I don't want to rise up out of my bed Too many thoughts in my head Don't want to be who I used to be Gonna take the back seat and let you need it I need to stop, need to stop Cause I'm going too fast and I know my God is still God And you got my back To me, I'll follow Your hands hold my tomorrow your grip, your grace, you know the way you got me tenderly, yeah You need, I'll follow, just like the way and I'll go Cause I know what you got for me, it's more than I can see So lead me on, on, on and on, just lead me on Thank you, Grace. You're such an incredibly talented young lady. We're glad you're part of our congregation. Let me tell you some announcements, and then we'll turn to the, to the Word of God. Uh, as you recall, as you know, we are starting our worship next week here in the building, May 17th. We're going to have two services at 9 and 1030. Now, we've got some special rules, and we want you to be aware of these. Because it's, we know it's going to be a soft opening, it's going to be a slow op opening, and we want you to do what you feel comfortable. So there will be a service at 9 o'clock, and it will also be uh, shown online live. So it'll be on our Facebook page, and it'll be on our, our web, web uh, presence. And we'll tell you more instructions on how to get to it, but it'll be online uh, on, our web, on our web page. Then we will have another service at 1030. So we want you to feel free to use those at home. And matter of fact, we're going to call this online worship 
And if you want to come and join us in the building, we're welcome to do that because we're, we're trying to be very obedient to our government and our leadership because Scripture tells us to do that. Here, let me give you some rules, though, okay? Now, we don't want to overkill this rules because you know, it's going to take all the fun out of coming together. But we want you not to enter the building until 15 minutes before service. So that means don't come early, early, because we, we don't want you here um, early. We want you to be separate. And, we want to be, and please hear our heart. Our whole, aim, our whole aim is to keep you safe. So hear our heart. And, and uh, we also want you to realize that the staff and the ushers are going to be in the building to help you and to guide you. But please listen to their requests and listen to their instructions and follow through. We want you to do that. We want you to remind, uh, remember of social distancing and stay apart from each other. We don't want anybody hugging and clapping hands and shaking hands and, and your personal contact. We want you to remember that. We don't want you to congregate. The Connection Center will not be there for fellowship time. It's going to be there as a hallway to get into the worship center for us to have worship and to get back out. Now, we're going to be seating in family units. So when you come in, there will be right, we're going to seat in every other row. And we're going to put only one family in a row, unless they're real long rows, and we'll put you on either end and kind of stagger everybody. We want you to be separated, so we want you to be a row apart from one another. We want you, if, as you come in, you'll be given a set of instructions and a little handout, and then we're going to take your temperature. We think that's safe. So we're going to take your temperature at least these first two weeks that we open to see how it goes. We want you to, when you go to the restroom, be sure and wash your hands and spend, you know, sing happy birthday five times as you're doing that, if you would. We were going to have some tables. Now, we were not going to have uh, uh, nursery or children's ministries because of several reasons, but we're not going to do that. So, parents, we want you to keep your kids with yourself. If your children are, are not able to stay in the worship center during the service, we're going to have about six or seven big round tables in the Connection Center where you can watch the service live on the TVs that are out there in the Connection Center. Realize we won't have donuts, we won't have coffee, we won't have the normal things that are part of grace. And that breaks my heart, but we're going to do that. If you need more privacy, we're going to have some rooms set up in the children's area, and they can direct you to those where you can take your children and, and enjoy a service on one of the monitors in the children's area. But hopefully we can all stay together in the Connection Center um, we want you to wear a mask if you've got one, bring it with you. Uh, we'll have some here at the church, but if you'll bring one, that will be much better. We also, based on our church, church leadership people, have told us not to take pictures and post anything on social presence. So we don't want you taking pictures and posting on, uh, on, the, on Facebook or things like that because we don't want somebody doing something across the building that may not meet guidelines, and then we get in a lot of trouble because we've done something we're not supposed to do. So please hear our heart. Um, if you touch envelopes uh, or paper products, we want you to take them with you. So your bulletin, um, if we have one, or your offering envelopes, be, be sure to, to take, uh, take them with you. I also ask you to be nice. Somebody, I, I sent out uh, that poem I received from somebody that talked about your, your opinions and whatever, whatever happens, just be nice. So that's what we want you to do. If you're folks over 65, we encourage you to stay home. If you're, now that doesn't include me because I am 65, so, but I'm going to have to come. Somebody's got to preach. If you're running fever, do not come because we're going to find it out at the door and we're going to send you back home. Uh, if you have any kind of special health concerns, we encourage you to stay home. We're going to have an online presence for you to watch the whole service. You'll see it all from the comfort of your lazy boy in your home. So remember that. If you've got a persistent cough, please stay home. Um, if you've got any fever. Now, when you depart worship, we don't want you to go to the Connection Center and visit like we normally do. We'll do that in the time to come. But this time, all we're going to do is have, a, have an online presence. Even Jamie said that this morning. An online service, and we're going to invite people to come and be with us. And we're going to separate you out. So the staff will be here to help you, and I think it's going to be a, a wonderful experience. I think everybody's wanting to get back together. Just realize we can't be church just like normal just yet, okay? So we appreciate that. We know you're going to do a great job, and we're going to have a wonderful time. And then when we, we, we are, have already decided to postpone the, the Memorial Day picnic, so we'll probably have it in Labor Day or sometime in the fall, and we'll have another picnic another time. So we're having to just scale back on everything. Anything in the church will not happen except Sunday morning uh, attended online worship. That's a good word. I, I like that. We're going to call it online worship with a few people coming to watch us and be with us. So, But we're going to do it at two services at 9 and 1030 to kind of scatter us out. 
But realize nothing else is going to happen in the church until at least June. And then we'll make some decisions after that. We'll see how the, how the, um, the virus is going and how the health is going. So we don't want, uh, the numbers are keep going up. And you may have your own understanding of why they're going up. All I know is there's more people with it. Whether they're testing more or not, more people are showing up that we have it. So uh, there are a lot of people that are asymptomatic. Uh, and I'm not a healthcare professional, don't claim to be. But I do know common sense says if there's a rampant virus going around, stay put. Okay, that's the rules. Now it's time to give our worship to the Lord and our tithing. So you have done such an incredible job. We are so blessed that you have done what you've done. So let's pray over God's blessings as you uh, give on your tithe and your offering this week. This week, um, this past week was Giving Tuesday, and I encourage you on Tuesday night to, to be sure and remember your tithe, but then be, be generous and be gracious and send, send something to some giving people. I want to say thanks to those special people in our church who have given extra to help some of our families. We sent out a lot of checks this week to try to help some of our families, and I keep encouraging you. If you're going through a struggle time, please call us and let us know so we can help you. So let's pray over the offering, and then we'll turn to the Word of God. Father, I come in the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray as we gather in the, in the, the virtual house today, Father, as we gather our tithe and bring them to the storehouse. Lord, we do it by mail. We do it by online giving. But, Lord, you have blessed our church, and you have blessed our people because they have been faithful. Father, thanks for always meeting the needs of our church. You have, Father. And now, according to word, the word of God in Malachi, I pray that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on those that are faithful in their tithing that they cannot even contain. Bless them now, O oh Father. And I pray these folks that have businesses that have been hurt and harmed, these people that have been furloughed, I pray that you'd pour out a blessing on them in a special way. Meet their every need, because Scripture says you will. In Jesus I pray. Amen. Again, thanks for being with us today on this special Mother's Day, Ladies' Day celebration of Grace Community Online. Uh, we appreciate the worship, those that have been involved in the service, the media play. Let me just say also thanks to Fred and Hannah who sit back there every week and enjoy my sermons and, and the other staff members. And I want to say thanks to these guys for editing and doing all the work they've done. And then I want to say thanks to our staff because they've been reaching out to you and doing online presence and uh, doing preaching the last three weeks. And I appreciate the staff around here. God, God bless them. But today is all about you ladies. We want to honor you. We want to recognize you. We want to, we want to talk about you today. Uh, we celebrate you. We, we're, um, many times in, in our celebrations, we, we want to focus on, on moms, and we do want to do that. But at the same time, we want to focus on all the ladies because we know there's some moms, some ladies that aren't moms, or some people that don't have good experiences with their moms, or maybe you've lost your mom. I was telling telling the staff earlier this week. This has been tough. Matter of fact, I changed my sermon because of my mom's situation. She went into the hospital uh, last Wednesday and uh, really is struggling to breathe. And her, She's alert. She's very mentally clear, but she's just struggling to breathe. And they've got to give her almost total oxygen to breathe right now. So just pray with us. And I, I pray that uh, God will have his plan for her life. So, But, uh, you know, we, we, when, as I was preaching about my mom, mom's name is Mary, Mary Jane. And she used to hate it because they would tease her and call her Mary Jane the Syrup Girl. And you folks in your 80s may remember those old commercials about Mary Jane the Syrup Girl. But it's really funny. She always wanted to just be called Mary until she wants to refer back to her what she, I think she likes. And she'll say, I'm Mary Jane. So anybody that knows mom knows that. But I was thinking about Mary, and, and I, I'm going to turn my attention to Mary today. And I'm going to uh, preach a message on Mary and the lessons that we learn from Mary. You know, I think many times we as Protestant people or, or from non-Catholic perspectives almost want to shy away from Mary. And there's no reason just because, because of what your feelings are or what your thoughts are. Mary is a very important role. She was the mother of, of Jesus. Can you imagine what she must have thought? Here was a young lady engaged to this carpenter and only find out she was uh, the Holy Spirit. An angel drops in on her and tells her she's going to be with child. And, and imagine how your world has totally turned upside, upside down. She was an incredible mom. And, and, you know, moms are just incredible people. Where would we be? Where would you be without your mom? I know very few people that never had a mom. That's a joke, so I'm waiting for your responses to come back on the video. You know, we get a chance to visit with moms and ladies, and that's one of our great ministries. Motherhood is one of the great institutions. I was just thinking about the lessons that we've learned from, from uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And I was thinking about some of the lessons that I learned from, from my mother, Mary, 
um, she taught him, and I preached a sermon. I could not find it as I looked back about all the different lessons I learned from my mom. One of the lessons that she used to teach us is you don't chew gum in church. Several reasons for that. She was, she'd make us uh, stop and empty our gum before we got to the church because she didn't want us to be in prayer and the Spirit of God come on us and we try to speak in tongues with a big wad of double bubble. So she always made us get rid of our gum. And she always would teach us to look your best before God and the world. She wanted me to be a professional. She always wanted me to be a dentist. And I was studying that way until God called me into the ministry. But uh, I think she was even more thrilled when I surrendered to the Lord and became a minister. Uh, she made us kneel down and pray on that old green and blue flowered couch in our living room and pray before we left the home and to go to school. But we had to be on our knees. She taught us how to sing harmony in the back seat of that old 64 Chevy Bel Air. Me and my brother and sister, and we sang perfect harmony when we were a little bitty. Uh, or at least we tried to sing perfect harmony. I could go on and on about all the lessons I learned from Mother Mary. She was a godly church lady. She served the North Dallas section. She served the North Texas districts in, in women's ministry, in uh, missionettes. And, and um, I was blessed to have a, a, a gracious mother that shaped my, my life. And I hope to get to take this video out to show her so I can let her hear me preaching about her. But well, I want to look this morning for just a few things and, uh, about what we can learn from Mary, the mother of Jesus. We find a picture of her in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. If you want to read with me, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. I'm going to read a few scriptures today. In the sixth month, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, the town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel to her said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give, give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him a throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angels, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible to God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. The angel left her. Father, I pray that you would anoint this time together and may we learn some great lessons from this special lady in the life of Jesus, Mary. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let's look at some of the lessons we learned from Mary, the mother of Jesus. Number one is make the best out of every situation. Look at what Mary was called to do. She was given a bad situation and she made the best out of it. Mary is called upon during her ninth month to go to, back to visit the family where Joseph's family was supposed to go to pay their tax. Can you imagine having to travel about 100 miles to visit your in-laws when you're nine months pregnant? Can you imagine? Number two, she also had to deal with her husband who forgot to make hotel reservations or find him some place to stay. She had to place her brand new baby in a cattle feeding trough. She also had to welcome visitors and shepherds into the birthing room and to be right there with a brand new baby. You know, some of us are very cautious about our brand new babies, but Mary made the best out of a bad situation. Now, we can learn from Mary that you can make the best out of any situation regardless how bad it is. So I want us to learn today from the lessons from Mary. Moms, we have to be that like that. And I'm glad that moms are like that. You can turn lemons into lemonade. Moms can turn stuff in the closet into a craft activity for, a, for a, a sheltered day. Moms can take a kiss and heal a broken heart or a bleeding finger. Moms can make a snack or a simple meal into a banquet fit for a king. I tell brides in every wedding that I do, it'll be up to you to make your house a home and make the best out of whatever life throws at you. I think we can learn from Mary to make the best out of everything life deals you. To be a great person, learn from Mary. When you get thrown bad situations, turn it around into something really good. Be flexible. Life can be tough. 
We find ourselves dealing with many tragic situations. We need to learn to make the best out of bad situations, regardless what the tragedy may be. Number two, I think the second lesson we can learn from, from Mary is to don't assume how far your kids can go. Don't limit their success. Be ready to receive gifts from strange people who want to bless your children. Not only did Mary have to receive a smelly shepherds and the magi with gold and frankincense and myrrh, but she had to welcome them. Mary was open to expect great things from her son. Don't put limitations on your children. Don't assume you know how far they can go. Don't assume they're going to turn out bad. Don't assume they're going to spiral out of control. Believe the best. Always believe the best for your kids. Don't expect them to be only your kids. They may be just Johnny or just Susan or just Jesus, but don't assume that's all they will ever become. God may have great things in store for your children, more than you can even comprehend. Yes, even beyond your dreams and your wildest expectations. This morning in the cartoons of the morning paper, uh, Baldo cartoon, we're having a birthday celebration. And they were singing happy eighth birthday to their son. And they said, happy birthday, Mr. President. And the whole point was they were assuming he could be the president of the United States even when he was eight years old. That's what I want you to receive today from Lessons from Mary is believe the very best for your children. I'm, I like what Brian and Amy Detmer say about their son, Dean. They call him a world changer. Even at the baby shower, before he was even born, they were calling him a world changer. I like that. I think we need to dream great things for our kids, believe great things for our kids. They may have uh, expectations on, on what they can do and what they can accomplish, but you encourage them to be better than they are. Have great plans for them and dreams for what your kids can do. LaDonna and I have been blessed to have a son and a daughter and now a son-in-law that have accomplished great things, and we're proud of them, and we're, we're so thrilled with them. But let our kids soar. I pray that you let them re uh, receive gifts and praise when they receive it. And to all of us, I think we need to reach out and believe your mom's dreams for you. I pray that your mom had a dream for you. I pray that your mom had great dreams that you could become. What did your mom want for you? Your mom may not have had great dreams for you, but you can still reach out and have great dreams and you can still accomplish great things. My mom always used to say, Richard, you need to be a professional. Don't just have a job, get a profession. She always wanted to be a dentist. Matter of fact, one of my very first jobs is I waxed the boat or for the dentist that she worked for. I'd clean his office and she always wanted me to be a dentist because of her dreams, I always wanted to be a dentist. Whatever it is, reach out. Believe the best for your children. See them as rising to something great and encourage them to go all the way they can go. Number three, I think the lesson we need to learn from Mary is when an angel visits, pay attention. You never know what an angel is going to tell you what's going to happen. God may, be, may upset your world totally to accomplish his plans through you and your family. When an angel visits, pay attention. An angel of the Lord came to this young virgin and, and said what God was about to do. And she said, whoa, how, I, whoa, how can this happen? It can't be to me. I'm still a virgin. But the simple virgin became part of God's plan. Uh, we, we have a sin problem. We needed a Savior. And God used this simple young lady to birth the Savior who would lay his life down to redeem us back from our sin. God so loved us that he, laid, that he, he gave us his only begotten son that he should, could live his life and give his life as a sacrifice for many. Mary had to allow herself to become part of God's plan in order to accomplish his dreams and his, and his plan, his purpose for the world. Don't assume that you can't be something great in the kingdom of God. When an angel visit has a special job for you to do for the kingdom of God, be open to it. I like what Mary said, as it be it unto me, whatever the Lord would want, be it unto me. We've got to listen to the angels that come to us. We've got to accept what they have because God may be wanting to work through you to accomplish great things in, his, in your life, in his world. Number four, allow the Holy Spirit to accomplish great things in your life. We can learn from Mary. Let God work through you to accomplish his mighty plan. This kind of dovetails with the last one that I just went through. An angel told her the Holy Spirit would come upon her and she would bring forth a child. And he, she said, be it unto me as you have said. We need to understand that we may not always understand what God is doing. 
Some things that God may be wanting to do in your life and to accomplish through your life, you may not know what he's doing or how he's going to accomplish it through you. But receive it. Maybe totally out of, you may feel like things are totally out of control. That chaos is ruling in your life. But realize that you must be open to what God is doing in your life, regardless what it is. God may be up to something, something great, and you just can't see it right now. I've seen that happen in many people's lives where they, they couldn't understand why the chaos was happening in their life or why their turmoil was happening. And in the, in the, the, the days of time, God would accomplish great things through their life or through their children or through their circumstances. I've heard of folks who have been out of jobs and they've come back and said, in this time when we were totally broke, we had to become totally dependent upon the Lord and they learned faith. I've learned folks who, who through, through a tragedy or, or a nightmare situation said they learned to wait for God to reveal what he was doing in their lives and see what was happening. God may be doing something so special in your life that you can't handle all of it right now. He has to open it at a, like a day at a time or a window at a time so you can see God's plan unfolding before you. I think all of us, had we, we seen that this worldwide pandemic would happen in the course of just a few weeks, I was listening to some news reports just this week and about how that we've, we've accomplished more things than, than many other tragedies. The stock market it, uh, unfolded back through months in the 20s, and all of a sudden this has happened in just a matter of weeks. We, we probably couldn't have understood it had we uh, understood the whole thing and had it presented all at one time. But day by day, we're seeing how God is working through us. Realize God may be working something special in your life. I called somebody the other day and I told him, I said, I don't know why I'm calling you. And uh, we just had a moment of tears between the two of us because he needed somebody just to call and encourage him. You don't know when God's working something out in your life and God may be working through you to do something great. Mary became the, the mother of the, the savior of the world because she was willing to do what God asked her to do. So I think that's what I want you to hear today, lesson four from Mary, is to realize God may be doing something special through you by his Holy Spirit, allow it to happen to accomplish his plan. What could God be speaking to you today, to do today to accomplish his plan? And number five, realize who you are. Be a servant of the Lord. I think one of the greatest lessons Mary taught her son and teaches us is to be servants of the Lord. Know why you are anything. You have been called. You have been redeemed by God for his service. Scripture says that you've been redeemed with a price. We need to learn we are not our own. We have a job to do in the kingdom of God. You have a purpose, as our friend Rick Warren would say. You have a purpose and it needs to drive your life. Realize there, there's not a time to rest and, and others to take our place. We must know the kingdom of God. Accomplish it what it does because someone does as the Lord instructs them. So listen to what the Lord is telling you to do. Listen to what his instructions are. Be a servant of God. Carry out his plan. We all want to uh, learn great leadership lessons and we go to classes and seminars on how to increase our leadership cap capabilities. And, and, uh, but you know, there's very few people that want to go to a class on being a servant. I think that's the lesson we need to learn from Mary is learn how to be a servant. Accept what God has given you to do and then do it with all your heart. Mary had no reason to go along with this wild plan. But she said, I am the Lord's servant. Be it unto me. I'll do whatever it takes. That's my charge to you today on this, lady, on this ladies day when we're honoring all of our ladies. Listen to what God is asking you to do and then follow through. As we think of Mary, may we always realize this is God's plan of reaching out in love to his world. And he accomplished that by reaching out to this lovely lady, Mary, just a simple teenager, but she became a mighty, powerful tool in the hands of a great God. God knew it would take a sacrifice of his son. So I think he picked just the right lady to accomplish his plan for his world. So I ask you today, what is a great day? What a great day this would be to enter into a new role of service to the Lord. We can learn from Mary and we want to salute Mary and all the ladies of grace and their job in accomplishing God's plan on the, wor on the world. So here are the five lessons I want you to learn today. Make the best out of every situation. Learn from Mary to turn a bad situation of lemons into a, a great refreshing lemonade. Number two, don't assume how far your kids can go in life. Believe the very best in your children. 
I probably need to throw in a two point A right there. Realize that things may not always happen as you plan. I was just had a flash of Mary standing at the foot of the cross, realizing the son that she had had birthed and watched grow up and minister to the world now was taken away from her. Be willing to, to let go and sacrifice those things that God has given you. Number three, when an angel visits, pay attention. What is God up to? Number four, allow the Holy Spirit to work out his plan through your life. And number five, be the Lord's servant. There are so many other lessons I think we can learn from Mary. I think most of all, we need to realize to be available, to be used of God to accomplish his plan and his purpose. So on this Ladies' Day, this Mother's Day here at Grace, I salute you and I ask God's blessing upon you. And I pray that we would all, as members all of Grace, would learn from this wonderful Lady Mary on this Ladies' Day the lessons that we can learn from her life and her ministry. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for all of our ladies, all of our moms here at Grace and even those who aren't at Grace. I pray your blessings on them. Father, I pray you'd smile on them and lift up your countenance upon them. I thank you for Mary and her service to the kingdom of God by birthing her son and then releasing her son to accomplish your plan. Father, I thank you for the lessons we learned from her and now may we take them, each one of us, into the next week. May you bless our people in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you'd let your face shine upon them, smile on them, be gracious unto them, O Lord. Lift up your countenance upon the house of grace and bring your peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you, Grace.
Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions or prayer requests, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Also, make sure to keep up with us on all of our social media at FMGrace.com. Don't forget, next week you can either join us online or in our building for our service. Now have a blessed week and we hope to see you next week.